Lance, if you heard him talking about Michael and, and moving him around, I, I think he's got one penalty also in like almost 500 snaps. How important has he been for this offense? Yeah, he has been, you know, he's played huge. He's played really big for us, played some critical situations and big minutes for us. Um, and Coach mentioned it, a guy that we can move around, that we trust in multiple positions. And with the injuries that we've had up front and just offensively, you know, that's been critical for him to help this offense in different ways. And I think people forget how different it is to play left tackle as opposed to left guard and then move over and play right tackle or right guard and to be able to play all four of those positions, um, you have to know all four of those really well. And he does a nice job, you know, mentally handling all those things. And he's done a great job um, handling all those and playing really well for us, which gives us some freedom and flexibility uh, up front. Lance, coach called them deceptive plays. You guys ran a couple trick plays uh, <laughs> in, in the, the win. How much is that becoming a part of the offense? We've seen that a little bit more recently. Yeah, um, I call them gadgets, um, you know, whatever you want to call them, trick plays. You know, our guys love them. You know, we have them up each and every week. I think, you know, the flow of the game and also the defense dictates where and when you call them, if you call them. Sometimes you'll, you know, we've, we've worked a couple of those plays that we've run the last couple of weeks. We've repped them, you know, three or four weeks or since the beginning of the season in training camp. And so, you know, we kind of have an area on our call sheet that, you know, we, we have a package of those plays and we carry them each and every week. And, um, you know, sometimes you get them dialed up, sometimes you don't. But our players love them. They feed off of them. They have, you know, they're kind of fun plays. Um, but uh, they, they're, they're huge momentum plays and they're impact plays. And, and, and and, you know, love when coach, you know, uh, gets them called and we execute them. Uh, they become big plays for us. Lance, obviously at various points of the year, there have been times where the red zone offense has been kind of up and down or the offense has kind of struggled to respond to the defense making a big play. And even on that Wake Forest, in that Wake Forest game, there were a couple of stall drives early. In that third quarter, you guys were able to respond to every, almost every single big play the defense made. How much confidence does that give for your group as a whole, knowing that you were actually able to capitalize on big plays by the other side of the line of scrimmage and capitalize on that momentum going forward. Yeah, let me just say this. I mean, hats off to, to Coach Brown, our defensive staff, our you know, our defense in terms of, you know, creating havoc plays, creating extra possessions for us, creating momentum in games. That's huge. Um, and, and we absolutely feed off of that. It's been great for us. It's helped us win games. Um, and, and exactly what you just said, our offense has fed off of it. You know, when we've gotten turnovers at times we haven't, you know, uh, produced, you know, points off of it. But, you know, uh, we, we did a great job in the third quarter, you know, re responding to that momentum and, and the extra possessions that, that they gave us. They've done an excellent job. I'm really happy to see them playing at a high level. I think Coach Brown's done an excellent job, um, you know, and, and I knew that this was a good defense having gone against them all spring and training camp. I mean, they gave us fits. And so I think that they're playing at a really high level. They're playing with confidence. And I think that that gives us confidence uh, as an offense that, we don't have to score every single possession. Um, if something you know doesn't go right offensively, hey, let's go to the bench, let's go to the sideline, let's figure out how we can be better, how we can fix it, how we can get our side corrected, and then go out and continue to play better. And I think that that's what we've got to do moving forward in this season is, is – that win was great, but that was last week. We've got a great opponent coming in this week. I mean, when you look at James Madison, I mean, this is a really tough opponent. I mean, when you watch them defensively, I think they're ranked in the top 10 in the nation in defensive category in 21 categories. I mean, they are really good. They're really well coached. They fly around. They create. They're second nationally in creating havoc plays. So whether it's tackle for losses, turnovers, I mean, they create a ton of havoc plays. And so we've got our work cut out for us this week. Um, we have to accept the challenge of trying to get better each and every week and knowing that we're facing a good opponent this weekend. Tyler's made some really good catches throughout the entire year, but it seems like when the ball's a little high, he's always going to get that. Is it, Have you seen that when he goes up? It just seems like I mean, there were two the other night and I think one the week before. He does. He he thrives off of those, you know, high balls, those contested catches situations. You know, we talked about it last week, Jody. You know, you asked me about that, um, just cont contested catches. And he's got great uh, body control with the ball in the air. He goes up. He's like a basketball player. He can go rebound the ball at the highest point. And that's what you have to do, you know, when the ball is up in the air. But he really likes the ball when it's elevated. Him and Malik have worked on that. And we, we talk about that in practice, actually. You know, we have a period in practice where we're just throwing on air, and he wants the ball elevated. And Malik's 
it's, you know, working on throwing the ball and, you know, him being able to have great balance and body control and go up and, you know, snatch, snatch the ball out of the air. And so I think, you know, his, you know, background as a basketball player and, you know, all the things that he does, you know, allows him to, to you know, go up and, and, and find the ball and have a big catch radius. Is Lance piggybacking off of that? What more do you need to see from Tyler to kind of be a little more reliable and just be that a go-to guy, I guess, for Malik? Yeah, um, I think he's done a great job of when his number is called, maximizing his opportunities, uh, but continuing to do that and continuing to create separation down the field. You know, I mean, he had one opportunity on a third down where it was a bang bang play. You know, we, we throw, you know, we call a, a stop route on, on third and I think eight or nine, and you know, it, it's bang bang. You know, kind of getting held at the top of the route, but it's one of those catches that he normally makes, and I expect him to make it. He expects himself to make it, and so I think continuing to make those plays continues to give not only Malik confidence to throw him the ball, but also also, us confidence to put him in those situations, and then call plays to get him um, the ball when, when you know the, the the game's on the line or in those critical situations. So continuing to do those things. Back to the gadget plays, uh, Braden Smith, for example, is now three for three throwing the ball. Obviously, teams are seeing this; they're catching on to that. How can you still disguise that or do something off that that keeps that? kind of play being effective yeah that that's a great point you know and and I think Braden is, is is one of those guys but you know we've also tried to find different ways to uh, package those you know gadget plays um, whether it's you know him touching the ball first or second you know finding ways to motion him just like this week you know we kind of hit him in the backfield we went tempo and hit him in the backfield behind Malik you know trying to bank on the fact that a tempo play and you know no huddle play a situation where we're going fast we're hiding him in the pistol behind Malik you know the defense doesn't have time to necessarily recognize him uh, but he, he is a guy that you know defensive coordinators and defenses their antennas up when he's on the field that he, he's kind of the trick trick play guy but he's also you know he's a starter he plays in almost every offensive snap when, our, when we're in our three receiver set so they have to you know guard and defend him doing the other things as well because he's a really good route runner he catches the ball really well we trust him to do all those things in, in, as a normal you know receiver and so we're not just putting him in the game so I think that helps hide some of what we do you know to complement those gadget plays. Thanks, guys.